All right, so we are recording. We are here at the Big Oak in Thomasville, Georgia, the corner of uh, Monroe and Crawford. And so I am going to be drawing on the other side, on the southeast side of the, uh, of the tree. So I'm gonna be walking over there, but uh, I'll turn the camera around so you can kind of see how massive this tree is. gorgeous tree and it has this whole sort of uh it's really interesting to come different times of year and see the, the whole sort of ecosystem that grows up around this tree and you know think about this is uh just just one example of uh, an entire universe in a tree so um go sideways here and uh, we'll back up and you can kind of see the setup. I've actually got, instead of my harness that I'll be wearing, I, I have a tripod now. So we're uh, moving up in the world of gear. So that's always good. And uh, let's turn my, turn my camera around and get it set up. There we go. Now, might be a little higher. All right, so there. So this, these are a couple of the examples of the trees that I drew um, about nine years ago when I was first captivated by this tree. And uh, these are postcards. I'm actually going to put them in the, in the box over there with the sign. And I'm drawing today on uh, a piece of mat board because it's a little bit breezy. So I'm going to actually use the mat board because it's easier to, uh, so it doesn't flap around. And, um, We'll kind of go through a, a basic drawing, you know, with, with a subject this large, unless you back up really far, you can't really get the entire uh, tree in there. Um, so what I like to do is focus really on this, this main area of the trunk and kind of how the limbs sort of spread out off the page. And uh, it makes for a, a nice, interesting, dramatic, uh, picture. Uh, I will be going back and forth to the easel so you can actually see what I'm doing. I may uh, bring this up a little bit. Um, but if you're drawing along with me to the tree, you may, uh, let me see if I can, there we go. Um, I'll try to uh, go back and forth so you can kind of see what I'm doing. But most of all, welcome and thank you so much for coming again. This is the last uh, virtual drawing class of the, uh, of the semester. Um, and I just wanted to uh, end on, a, on an interesting note in a place that I love to draw. And uh, hopefully you will enjoy it too. I'm just trying to position this a little bit better. All right. So show of hands, everybody can see the, the tree and the easel. Do I need to adjust anymore? Everything's good? Okay, great. All right. So I am using drawing pencils and I'm gonna draw first with a, a 2B pencil. That's a little bit darker than I like to start with, but it's a, just for the purposes of this demonstration. It's, um, it's a nice sort of light beginning. And then what I will do is move into the darker, 
the, the higher the number B, the softer the lead, which is the, the darker mark it makes. And, uh, and so I will start with just doing the kind of outline of how I want the tree to look in the composition. And, uh, and that includes just making basic shapes of the, you see how the, uh, the leaves are in almost like clumps. So you see a clump there and a, and a clump there. And, um, and just basic outline of those shapes. And then I'll go back and demonstrate a little bit uh, of the details. So um, we'll kind of get started here. Um, and if it's a little too confusing, I can put it on the harness. And so we can kind of see back and forth what I'm doing. I just thought that this would be a little bit easier to, um, to follow with the, with the tripod so it's not moving around so much. All right, so I will begin by I want to begin again like we did with the landscape by knowing where the horizon line is. So I'm going to uh, put the horizon line I'm going to rough it in a little below halfway, so it'll be more in that bottom third like we talked about. Let's see if it can... And then I'm going to, uh, unlike a landscape where there's a little asymmetry and you want to uh, position the, the horizon line a little differently, with a tree, you're, the main subject is the tree, so you want to fill as much of the space as possible with the subject. And so I'm going to kind of come in and... it is. The other thing you might like to do is really take into account the negative space, so the space that is around the trunk. In fact, that's sometimes easier to do when the, when the limbs and the, and the leaves are in these areas that allow some of the sky through. Just drawing the area where the sky is is actually sometimes an easier way to visualize the light and dark shapes. So looking as you look up into the uh, canopy, there are little places where a limb might come through, but basically this shape is the sky. And uh, this little teardrop area here is also part of the sky. And then as you move not sure if you can see it, but just above the uh, easel, the street is there, and then the arch of the um, of this lowest limb.
what you might not be able to see very clearly is all of the really interesting texture going on in the trunk. And I may, I may take the uh, camera a little bit closer when we get all the uh, basic shapes in so you can see that because um, it's really a wonderful texture study just to look at the trunk. Um, when I've drawn it in the past, that's what I've really focused on is this, this gorgeous sort of the way the trunk is has, uh, has all these different textures going on with the different ways it's grown. And the, uh, I love the way the, there's resurrection fern all across the limbs coming across there. It's also interesting that this is on a street corner. Uh, I'm going to just minimize the background and make it um, not a street corner. I'm just going to sort of minimize what's in the background and focus really on the tree. Yeah, you're getting there. Hey, Rich. So when hey, I'm Rich. Yes. The, the light is so bright on the pad that it's hard to see what you're drawing. Ah, great. Um, I will, uh, let me, let me see what I can uh, do about that. Maybe take it off the, the, the pad up to the camera for a second so that we can. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll do that. And so you can kind of, is that a better view? Uh, a little bit closer. Okay. So what I've done, you know, I'll just. Uh, okay. You can kind of see. That looks a lot like the portrait I did last week. <laughs> Does anyone else have any questions or, uh, or anything? So you're concentrating largely on the solid part of the tree that you see as a mass, not differentiating between bark or leaves, but just what, uh, at this, what seems at to this be the point, major components that stand out. At this point, just blocking in the shapes, yes, I am, I'm going to be just focusing on how the, how the limb structure works, um, you know, how, 
and then as I get a little more uh, detail, I will uh, I'll differentiate the bark the w the way the bark is uh, different, and also um, in fact I may move may move a little bit and actually get up into the shade area so you can kind of see a little more clearly. Um, so I think I'll I'm going to put put my harness on. And, uh, and take my drawing. I'm gonna get a little bit closer. Now that we have the, the bones, and maybe this will also help with the, the glare. Is that a little easier to see? Let's see. Maybe I'll move it some. Here we go. So you see the uh, a little more clearly how the how the tree is textured and everything and then hopefully you can see better of course there's still some glare on here there we go hopefully that's that's better so what I will do is um, show you some of the kind of textures, like now, now you see that this limb comes in front. Of the other one. And that this limb actually connects with it. So there's a, a kind of a, a joint there as those come across. And again, this is a, you know, this is why you start off very, very rough and sketchy. And then you can uh, make some adjustments as you go. Is this better for everybody? Nodding heads, good, good, okay. <laughs> if I can keep the camera on it. And there's this, this place where one of the limbs was taken down. kind of intrigued you know the uh, because this is such a mascot of the city there's a lot of care that goes into keeping all those limbs upright and there's uh, they've started using these really large wooden poles rather than the uh, the original uh, metal structure that they had uh, to kind of keep these limbs upright So when I'm coming in to do the texture, I'm gonna use, like we did with some of that shading in the landscape, I'm gonna use the side of the point. And uh, in fact, I may, um, let's see, shift here to a, I'm gonna come down here to my trough and um, 
let's see, a 7B is really, really dark. So that'll actually give me a really nice shadow. And I'll use the side of the point. This is not a very sharp pencil either. It's a very dull point, so you can kind of see how it So now, now that I've gotten the basic structure, I'm looking for darks and lights. And uh, I'm using the darkest pencil I have to, to shade in those really dark areas first. And then I move towards the uh, lighter areas, the highlights. Um, and we may, I may zoom back out to get those highlights, but for right now we can move in and really focus on those shadows. And because it's such a rough texture, I'm not being super uh, concerned with how, you know, the marks that my pencil make, because I'll just keep layering these kind of textural marks. This is kind of called cross hatching, where you're you're doing these marks like that and then layering with another direction of marks. And those layers of marks really begin to take on the character of the texture of the of the bark. You can kind of as you do it in patches. Not doing very good keeping my camera on it, let's see. You're doing great, we can see exactly what you're doing. Oh good, great. And I appreciate the bird sound effects. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's a, it is a gorgeous day with So I'm going to typically make the underside of all these limbs darker than the top since the sun is coming from that direction um, and that accentuates the roundness of the of the limbs so I'll, I'll go in and actually darken
There we go. And I'll let the shading kind of bleed into the area where the leaves will be, kind of covering that up so you can make that contrast, that, that kind of transition between the, the leaves and the limb. I'm going to go up here and do the same. really focused on the the pressure that I'm using on the on the point the less the less pressure the lighter it gets and so if you can really kind of change very subtly the whole look of the texture just by changing the, the pressure that you're using on that point. All right, kind of backing up just to show you an overall so far. Covering here that we do have some these sort of shapes of the, the leaves going on there and in here. Um, and over in there as they kind of go off the page. And then I like to work all over the, the composition and not just focus on one area at a time because that uh, that if you focus on one area at a time, it tends to make it look blotchy or choppy. You, you really need to kind of continue the same techniques all over. So I'm gonna just go ahead and uh, again, accentuating the, the bottom edge of that tr limb as it goes out, and this is almost like a, a silhouette of a limb over here. So I'm just gonna kind of shade that in almost completely. As it merges with, with this one. <clears throat> All right. Oop, my finger's in the way again.
these beautiful the crags in here, the shape of that bark. Right, so just backing up again. And you can kind of see as we look over here, the there's some there's this dark area there. Let me get it a little bit better. There we are. This this dark area there feeding into this limb and this kind of almost of a silhouette of a limb here. And then as you're looking up. Kind of see how the uh, the texture is, and there's that knot. If you can see it, there it is. The the knot where they had to trim off one of those limbs. Um, so there's a lot of variation of tone and texture in here. And um, so as we come back to the paper, just looking at the different places where you can really pick up some of that texture. This edge of the trunk, this, the main trunk there, it's kind of nice. Um, it's a really beautiful contour line. And as you follow it up, it makes a really nice jagged edge. So once you've done a really nice thick contour line like that, you can sort of spread off of that. Any comments or questions? Hey Rich, this is Julie. It's looking great. Oh, great. Yeah. I, I, um, Good to see you. Yeah, thanks. You can't actually see me because I'm hiding. Well, that's, that's okay. <laughs> Glad you're I here. I can see you. Thank you. <laughs> now it's fun to watch. I love the way you're um, dealing with the, um, you know, the line quality, you know, building up the values, but creating texture and, you know, creating interesting line quality that's really descriptive and really speaks to that cragginess of that of that beautiful tree. I appreciate it. Thank you. And I see so um, you're you're definitely like dealing with the darks first. That's your that's your approach is to walk in those darkest values. Drawing is my approach, yeah. Mm -hmm. I appreciate uh, I mean that's how I paint too. I'm you know yeah. so that makes a lot of sense. Um, so in dealing with a subject like this, since you, you have uh, a lot of experience, especially plein air, uh, do you have any other tips like you, you can think of just off the top of your head? Well, I, I, th I, I, I know, not really. I mean, <laughs> because, okay. you know, I deal, I deal so much with color. You know, yeah, when I'm out, it's, that's true. if I, if I'm using, if I'm not using color for me, it's usually a, um, it's usually more of a preliminary sketch where yeah. yours is more of a, you know, it, a, a, a final drawing. You're drawing for drawing's sake, not as a preliminary. Right. So you're making use of the, of the textures and mark making and, um, 
I love the composition. I love that, you know, you did have, you got you had to get up closer so we could see. I'm, I'm grateful to the young man who said, hey, we can't see. I was like, I guess I should have yeah. said that. I was like, well, uh, this isn't going to work out because I can't see the paper, but now we can. <laughs> so that's important. I, <laughs> I'm so glad Bill said that. That's I know, that was, right? Uh, that's great. Thanks to that. And um, yeah, this is a, this is a fun experiment. I, I, I hope for our sake, we don't have to teach like this next semester, but you know. Oh, I agree. I know. <laughs> um, and I am teaching a plain air class. You may class go in back. Huh? <laughs> I I'm am so, teaching. I? Oh, I say I am teaching a, a plain air class in the fall. So I hope it can oh, yeah. be in person, but you know, people can all go out and paint and draw at different places. And, you know, True. we can do that. If we had to. This is my drawing. All right. Well, you've got a cat, the cat. Got a cat in yours or a tiger. It's a tiger. No, it's a tiger. What you got? Oh, wow. A tiger in the tree. <laughs> and wow. That's this, amazing. This little trash squirrel right here. A trash squirrel. <laughs> That's what I call her. Very cute. She her looks name. like a tiger. What? She looks kind of like a tiger. Yeah. Beautiful. He's got this huge fluffy tail. <laughs> Rich, I'm 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 not I um I don't think I ever saw your um harness. I'm I might have uh, been a, away oh. for a second when you did that, but it's working. I mean, it is showing your drawing well, and it's is it's just around your neck. Is that it? It it, it is. It's just a. Uh, and I, I don't mean to stop your drawing to, okay. to show me. Well, that's all right. I can, I can kind of. Uh, yeah, it's just a, a basic harness. It's it's um. It at it actually has a clip for a smartphone, but the way the clip works, it's uh. It can only work portrait, so I have to uh, strap it on with a rubber band sideways, so <laughs> so the, so the camera can work uh, facing. So it's away almost from like it. one of those uh, racks that people use to play harmonica or something like that. Yeah, very similar. Yeah. And you and and you were able to purchase it uh, as a I, phone rack. I or found at it phone at phone the. I found it at the thrift store. Oh, you did. Yeah. And it, but, but that is the that's the purpose of it, or you repurposed a, a different like a harmonica rack or something. I'm assuming it's it it has a QuickTime symbol on the side of it, so I'm assuming it is for smartphones to do something. Mm -hmm. Take movies or whatever. Yeah, maybe maybe do a video a selfie video or something. I don't know. Such a tiny yeah. head. Luna has like this. Tiny oh, look at the the kitty cat. Head. She, but she hides her tiny little head with her big fur. So I am up in the upper canopy now. Just kind of getting some of those details. And once I've got the limb structure, then I'll, I'll kind of come in and do um, an overall shading of, of like the shape of the leaves and then do some minor details here and there to show um, texture of leaves and, and so forth. You don't have to draw every single leaf. No, no don't get on the Chromebook. No, don't get on the Chromebook. Looks like you got a helper. All right. I got like all over the Chromebook. Over the laptop. All right. So what we're going to do is continue working with the limbs. Sorry for those. Let's say back on up a little bit so you can kind of see Oh. 
All right. I love I love working on my phone because the battery goes so quickly. It's already down to twenty percent. That's great. <laughs> um, so what I think I will do, in the interest of time, is so here is the the structure, and you see where those areas where the uh, the leaves will be. Coming in. Um, and then we will uh, continue to work on these areas here. So I'm going to just to show you how to do some of these areas of leaves. I'm just doing a very light. shape. All over. Kind of a mid-tone. Then what I'll do is come back and really press in and you can kind of make and you can get as detailed as possible, but I'm I'm just kind of rolling the edge of my pencil to kind of create this texture. And I want to go over those lines that, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll outline the basic area that I want to use, but then the leaves will actually kind of overlap. And that will uh, soften that edge because you, because you want it to make, want to make it a, a ni nice natural looking shape. So that's, that is how I would treat the different areas of leaves. For the final touches on the bark, um, you can kind of come in once you have these cross-hatching layers of texture. You can actually get more specific and do some uh, areas, not the whole thing, but just some areas where like the more pronounced cragginess is. I'll try to get as close as possible to kind of give you the A lot of it is thinking about the shape of the limb, like how the limb is would be curved out toward you and really following that contour against the length. So you're really wrapping it around to show how round that limb is. All right, and then areas like this where the tree has been cut away, 
that's a So, uh, do you hear the, we're being serenaded. I'm sorry, I don't, sorry. Um, the fun of plain air. I wish I did have change. So showing the, the bottom there, you can really see how I'm going to kind of walk up to the tree to give you a really good look at the texture there, how nice and craggy that is. And just taking your, your point and following those lines and then going against that with the, the shape and shading in that really focusing on areas that are super dark like that and that edge and then here and there you can pay attention to some of those that resurrection fern and in there where the contour comes down that just kind of gives you a sense of <clears throat> and partly because I'm using a pencil, this is uh, this is a longer process than when I was using charcoal for the landscape. So that is why it's uh, it's a more involved drawing. But uh, I did want to just kind of stop here. If anybody has any questions, or I would love to see some of the. Um, before the battery runs about, out, I'd love to see some examples. How about some of the resurrection fern? Sure, okay. Um, well, with this limb right here, uh, similar to the similar to the, the leaves, I would just uh, you can't see every single frond of the of the fern but you can kind of give it a, a hairiness on that limb you see what I'm doing there and uh, I'm really changing the direction of these. Okay, trying to trying to keep the camera back on me. You can. I don't know that uh, our guests can mute. Um, but you see how how the uh, you know the resurrection fern is just a these these areas here. I think in terms of patches rather than trying to draw every single area. Just giving the indication of that texture. Um, obviously, if we were making a, a detailed uh, analysis of the limb, we could really get in and see all the different textures of the and how the fronds work, but uh, I'm just kind of giving it a little, a little bit of a uh, like five o'clock shadow or stubble <laughs> on the on the on the top sides of the limbs, you know, where it's growing most obviously up in here.
All right. So that is a. Uh, That is the, the basics of how to draw the big oak. I hope you uh, enjoyed that. Can I, can I see some examples? Oh, wow. Chip, that's great. Nice job. Good job. Yeah. Bill. Beautiful. I got a pen, I gotta tell you. That's that's yeah. It's it. It's difficult. Oh, good job, Susan. All right. Nice. I'm just flipping through. Okay, that's it. All right. Well, thank you so hey, Rich, much. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about the experience of experiencing your drawing? Like, why draw? When you look at your drawings later on. Mm. What kind of experience do you have? Like, I don't do it enough that if I ever do it, I always think about the experience of the drawing, which is nice. Because, uh, it helps me to remember a circumstance. So you mean in terms of uh, is, you know, what it elicits when I look at the drawing later? Yeah. Well, I, it's, that's, uh, that's an interesting question. I, I really, um, uh, because, Drawing is such a, um, it, it, it is sort of an all engrossing, especially in, in something like this out in the, in the, uh, in on like plain air, it's, it, it is such an all engrossing sort of uh, experience. And then you kind of think about all of the other senses besides what you've been seeing kind of come back, like the, the sounds, the interruptions, the, uh, the smells, um, so it's it is a, it's a the, yeah like the <laughs> the snow blower the leaf blower um, all of those uh, things kind of come back and uh, so it's interesting the the more um, and the more you're present with the drawing the more detail you get it actually feeds into all of the other senses as well for me um, if that does that answer your question <laughs> yeah yeah great. Um, well, wonderful. Well, I, I hope this, uh, you know, I'm still tweaking the experience of how to, how to show what I'm drawing versus the drawing itself. And um, so I'm just kind of, uh, any, any feedback anyone has, you can email me. I am, uh, yeah, Lindsay's daughter has a, oh, yeah, a beautiful tree with a tiger in it. I love it. Good job. But uh, I want to say thank you again, and good luck with the rest of the semester, and uh, best to everybody. Thank you, Rich. Thanks, Rich. Rich. This thank has been guys. great. Yeah. Thank you, Rich. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you so much. Good to see you.